You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, May 22nd show. You can also listen to us on podcasts, our Facebook premiere show, or our show on our YouTube channel. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We bring in studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money, because we are here to help you in today's economy. And now in studio, Cynthia Kaiser of Kaiser Advisors, LLC, Effective Communication, right here on 1150 AM, KKNW. Thank you for having me today. So Cynthia, let's start out with, um, do you want to save time and money with successful business relationships? Is that a good idea? Absolutely. Who doesn't want to save time and money? And the best way to do that is to make sure that you are communicating effectively with your clients and potential clients. Yeah, save, saving money, saving time, all is through our communication. I always say if you're not getting the results that you want, it's almost always in how you're delivering your message. And just as Dean talked about 1%, it's just making an adjustment in your communication by the smallest angle to where you're going to be able to get better results. And really it's our job as a, as a business owner, as a business leader to really think how we can best communicate with our clients because otherwise it's a missed opportunity for the clients that need our product or our service. So Cynthia, what do you do if you have trouble communicating with your family members, including spouse, I never have that issue, uh, significant others, LOL, or siblings and parents? Okay, well, I need to take a step back and introduce attachment theory. I had been 30 years ago, I met my best friend in college, and I realized early on that I needed to have very specific communication tools and strategies with her. I had to be very fragile, I had to be very specific, I had to be non-accusatory, and I didn't have the background back then, I was a tot, and I just started navigating the path with her, and then 20 years ago, I started with working with lawyers in a business development capacity, and I found myself doing that same thing. I was individually adopting my own communication style to how they communicated. And a photographer who was doing a massive website reboot with me and 80 headshots over the course of three days said to me, I've never seen anyone do that before. I said, what did I do? He said, you changed how you spoke to each and every one of them. I said, well, I had to. If I didn't get them comfortable with me, I wouldn't have gotten a good headshot. If I don't have a good headshot, I can't launch a new website. You know how that goes. So uh, at the end of 2016, my eight-year position as CMO at a law firm was being eliminated. And to be um, differentiated by my colleagues, I immediately went back to graduate school and got my master's in communication. The first thing they said to me was pick a phenomenon. I said, okay, great, what's the phenomenon? Swear. And I started researching all of these communication theories and I happened upon attachment. Attachment started in the late 60s with John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. And it was really how an infant attaches to their mother or caregiver. It's not the mother's fault, it's not the child's fault, it's nature, it's just what happens. And it was a three tier formula. Uh, the secure, anxious, ambivalent, just like it sounds, or avoidant. Then in the mid 90s, a bunch of communication scholars got together, too long to list all those names, and they came up with a four model quadrant for adult attachment. Very simply, secure, I like me, I like you, I trust me, I trust you. Dismissive, sometimes called avoidant, I like me, but I don't like you. I trust me, but I don't trust you. Then moderate, which is called 
um, ambivalent or preoccupied. I like you, but I don't like me. I trust you, but I don't trust me. And then um, the, the, the most severe, fearful avoidant or sometimes called disorganized. I don't like me and I don't like you and I don't trust me and I don't trust you. That became my thesis, that became my manuscript. That is what I went back and recorrelated and recalibrated all of the lawyer relationships I had made in coaching them and realized those attachment styles. Where someone falls on the attachment scale is how and why they communicate the way they do and how and why they perceive communication the way they do. So the old telephone game of I say orange and 10 people down the telephone say apple. I am here to decide if orange was said or apple was said and why. And once I have that knowledge, there are specific tools and strategies per style that allow people to to communicate more positively, more effectively, are able to resolve conflict more freely, and in the end, it saves them time and money. Well, what what a valuable tool. Uh, people communicate differently, and the quicker you can pick that up and having a tool like that to analyze that, the quicker that you can get your message across to another and not offend them quite frankly sometimes you don't know but you could say something to somebody and they hear it a different way than you're intending so what a valuable thing now i know and especially with people you love that um it can be tough to handle discussions with them around difficult situations are there uh, people in your life that are similar oh yes so half of my work is on the professional side that I've just spoken to. And the other half of my work is on the personal side, which I have the passion for. Tina, that is my passion. So whether it's couples or siblings or a man on his fourth wife or a woman on her fourth husband, and she's very, very successful in business or he is, but none of their kids talk to them. I like that. I like being at a cocktail party, albeit COVID, and everybody's outside and six feet away from each other. But after a couple of drinks, you notice a couple who are getting very spicy and salty towards each other. And the filter has come off, and they are no longer caring about how they communicate to each other. I like that. I want that. So, Cynthia, um, what do you do in a workplace when things get stressful because of lack of positive communication from managers, owners, and or staff? How do you advise on that? Well, I do workshops to improve communication infrastructure, and it's really about instituting respect, camaraderie, loyalty, and taking the time to listen. Most people are much more interested in talking than they are about listening. And listening is most important in the communication world. And there's also, as I'm sure you all have heard, a difference between hearing something and listening. Listening, you are not lacking curiosity. Listening, you are taking a moment and putting your feet into the shoes of who you are listening to and getting a sense of where they're coming from. Once I have a more accurate understanding of the two sides to a conflict, I am able to work collaboratively to get them to understand each other and their other sides, their own sides, and ways to benefit both sides of a conflict. Cynthia, that reminded me of my daughter right now. This is something I'm teaching her. She's five and I want her to actively listen better because she's five and she's so excited and she's got to get her things out, but she misses a lot because she needs to just hear the message and then respond. So just, I totally thought of my daughter, London, when you're talking about that. Um, so as far as creating and sustaining business relationships, that can be difficult for people. Do you find it difficult with yourself and your business? No, it's... If, if, if I wasn't an effective and positive communicator, I certainly wouldn't have the tools and strategies to teach others to do it. But it took a lot of self-awareness, self-actualization, self-realization in the 
the last five years of my life to really pull away from being an in-house chief marketing officer and for smaller firms marketing director and really understand the value I bring and yet also some of my impediments. Understanding your own impediments and your own roadblocks to effective communication can lighten your load and clear up that pathway. Yeah, and there's no shortcuts to the change that you must make to continue to level yourself up personally in your business. However, there are, sh there are shortcuts on how to get there when you work with somebody that has the expertise and has been through that path. So Cynthia, you cannot win all your clients and not everybody's gonna be the right client for your product or service. However, what if you lose a client after a period of time without being given a substantial explanation? Part of my coaching and consulting is really about uh, client feedback and making sure, because I call it corporate dating, it is corporate dating. And even though you've been married to a client and the ring is on the finger for 20 years, you still have to open the door and you still have to open, you know, um, um, bring the chair out. You have to find out what's bothering your clients. You have to find out what you can do better. You have to find out ways to improve the relationship through effective communication before you lose the relationship. Sometimes it's nothing that you've done. It's the way of the land and that's how it goes. But sometimes you can keep a client by listening more and learning to positively communicate with them. Cynthia, we're almost out of time. So this has got to be a quick one if you wouldn't mind. But do you feel sure. any aspects of abandonment rejection as far as personal or even per, uh, uh, business relationships? That's a big one because in the third tier, dismissive and ambivalent, and the fourth tier of fearful, avoidant, and disorganized. In the third tier, it's just the appearance of possible rejection and abandonment that will make people close up and not be able to listen or communicate. In the fourth quadrant, it's actually not perceived, it's real. Real abandonment, real rejection, and real neglect from past uh, experiences can rear up and make someone close off to being an effective communicator and also receive effective communication. So I work with people as to the historical trauma behind those communication efforts mm -hmm. of being abandoned and being rejected in order to realize their full potential. Yeah, Cynthia, a uh, great information and a great service that you are uh, offering to uh, the community. Thank you so much for being here. I wouldn't have traded it for anything in the world.